Hi everybody and welcome to Infinity. My name is Wesley Benito and today I'm going to talk about uh, an issue. Um, I I thought it, it, it wasn't an issue anymore, but uh, seems people are it seems people are, have uh, still have problem on this one. A user asked me about uh, adding details on a curve mesh. So uh, especially a cylindrical shape. So the way uh, he started was like this. So it creates a flat plane like this and had details and try to replicate it like the usual technique you use. You put, I don't know, 10. You create an empty and use this empty to make the, the array rotate it. So I create 10, so 30, oops. 36, okay. Oops. Oh, I didn't. Okay. So, oops. What's the problem with this mesh? So, as you can see, uh, okay. We'll, we will have pinching because uh, this is a flat face here and after that it curved with uh, the other array and it, it continue to make the, the closed shape but you will not have a smooth cylinder because it's flat. So the way you can uh, resolve this problem is uh, a technique you can have in any 3D package. You start with a cylinder like this. This one is 32. Okay, in front of you. Put six, no, seven is too large. Let me go with nine. Okay, nine is good. Start with nine. So I extract a part of the of the cylinder, and so uh, as you can see, it's already curved. So I'm absolutely sure it will be uh, uh, evenly curved uh, everywhere with the array modifier. So let me create. Was 32, so I have to create 16. Yes. Oh, well, first of all, let me create. Okay. So I have this. Oh, did I? No, I didn't activate. Let me decrease this one a little bit. Yes, so it's sixteen, sixteen. So I will have this. Oops. Optimal display. And this. So as you can see, the result will be smoother, but we'll st we will still have pinching. And the reason why is because this edge is uh, going at the corner. So it will, uh, if for example, let me duplicate this and create two here. Oh. Whoa. Okay. I will have a pole here, and even if the is it is a, a cylindrical shape with this pole here, it will create a pinch here. So the way you can solve that is simply to change the topology of the of the face, and I address that in the, the geo versus geo. So you put it that way, so you can have. Oh, I have, I have something, it's not right here, yes, the shape is not straight, okay, so now it will be evenly 
distributed everywhere. So you can after that uh, tweak it uh, because as you can see, the face here is slightly larger than this. So you can just uh, shape it a little bit like this to have almost the same perimeters everywhere. So it will be perfectly smooth. So the way I do it 100% of the time, and it allows me to have a flat face I can work uh, I can work with and without worrying about uh, about the curvature because I, I'm gonna use a simple deform to uh, to make the curvature work. So it is the same as it started. I'm, I'm gonna start like this. Let me even add a bit. Sorry, my mouse. I have problem with the mouse okay so I want to do the same let me put this with a simple okay now I'm gonna create an array whoops an array modifier and put it just after the mirror. I'm not going to select the, the last and uh, I'm going to show you why. So now I have this and what I'm going to do now, after the simple deform, I'm going to create, uh, after the subdivision, I'm going to create a simple deform with the bend and put that to 360 degrees. And with this technique, I don't have to care about the curvature because the simple deform is going to generate that for me. As it's going to smooth the 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 face for me automatically, like this. Let me optimize display. So and even let me show you that. Even if I have a pole here, it will stay smooth because of the subsurf coming right before the, the simple deform. So what I uh, generally do, I just put it to one when I start to demand like this and uh, apply everything. And after that, I can I can uh, uh, tweak the mesh if needed, but it, it allows me to uh, create details really quick, really fast, and I don't have to care about uh, about the the curvature of the initial face because it's already flat here. And it, if I want to have a, a real flawless mesh, all I have to do is the same: just apply here and here like this, and remove this one, and have this like this and it will be flawless absolutely flawless the downside is uh, you will have um, because of this setup you cannot use the uh, first last it's not going to merge so you have to just put a sharp a sharp here like this as you can see let me show you that as you can see here the mesh is not closed so when you apply uh, your mesh if you want to, because it's not, you're not uh, obligated to do it, because if you increase uh, uh, the subdivision again, it will be, you're not gonna be able to see it. Let me show you that. You will not see that. Uh, even even with the, te with the texture, you, you can keep it open, it, it, it's gonna work perfectly. But if you have to do, all you have to do is just uh, lower the subdivision, apply everything, and after that you can uh, you can create detail properly on it. So uh, this is the technique I use most of the time, and especially on cars when I have to 3D model the um, the rubber of the wheel. So all the crazy details, I, I just can go nuts in a, in a flat face, and after that I just put a, a subdivision on one on top of it and bend it with absolutely no problem. So this is the uh, the way I use it for 
100% off my 3D model. It allows me to work on a flat face and I don't have to care about uh, about the curvature after that because the simple deform would care, uh, would take care of that for me. So this is it. I hope it was informative. So as always, if you have any question, don't hesitate to, to ask me, send me an email. You can send me a, a, a message on YouTube, no problem. And uh, since the next video, I wish you a great day, everybody. See you soon.